Uh, we doing, guys? This is Mr. Patterson checking in with uh, IB Math AAHL Chapter 11. Um, this chapter is called Linear Algebra, and really just scratching the surface as to what linear algebra is. Uh, we're just going to go through a couple of topics here. Uh, those topics are systems of linear equations, row operations, and then solving two by two and solving three by three systems of linear equations. Uh, there are entire courses in college. Um, that cover linear algebra. So like I said, just, just barely scratching the surface as to what linear algebra actually is. We're gonna start in here with section 11a, systems of linear equations, uh, with the goal of hoping to stu having students uh, understand the key, vo key vocabulary having to do with linear systems and matrices as well. So we're, while we're gonna talk about linear equations, we're gonna talk about them a little bit differently here in this chapter. Um, at least a little bit more abstractly, um, but we're not really doing anything different with them. We're just kind of representing them in a slightly different way. So let's start with this first blue box. This is a linear equation in the variables x1, x2, all the way to xn is an equation which can be written in the form a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus all the way out to a n x n equals b, okay? where a1, a2, et cetera, all the way out to a sub n and b are constants. Now, that looks very different and very abstract, but it's really no different than saying 2x equals 3 is a linear equation, 4y equals 7 is a linear equation, and 3x minus y equals 4 are linear equations. It says that it goes all the way out to a sub n, x sub n, and while we'll go all the way out to a, a, three, a third dimension uh, linear equation, um, we won't go beyond that in this course here. That being said, if we talk about a solution to a linear equation, while we could think of a solution uh, from the algebra, spe algebra perspective as a, a, a solution being an x-intercept or something along those lines, but in this case, when we talk about a solution, we're just talking about any point that's going to be on the line. When we say a solution to the linear equation ax1 plus a2x2, plus all the way out to a sub n, x sub n equals b. It's going to be the set of values where x sub 1 equals c sub 1, x sub 2 equals c sub 2, where all of those values of c satisfy the equation. All right. So if we look down here, it says, for example, consider the linear equation x1 plus 2x2 plus, uh, sorry, minus 3x3 equals 8. If we were to check to see if 3, 4, 1 was a solution, all we'd have to do is plug it into the equation and we'd get eight equals eight. Therefore, those that is a particular solution to this system. If we tried x equals x1 equals negative one, x2 equals three, x3 equals negative one, we would also get eight. Therefore, that would also be a solution to the system. In fact, this particular system has infinitely many solutions. And we could write them, as you see on the bottom, x sub 1 equals 8 minus 2s plus 3t, x sub 2 equals s, x sub 3 equals t. And while that looks pretty confusing, it looks fairly different than what we're used to doing. Basically, all we're doing is we're just taking these parameters, s and t, and assigning them to be the solutions for x sub 2 and x sub 3. And then we're just solving for x sub 1 in terms of s and t. And we're just writing out those three solutions for x1, x2, and x3. So that's what we refer to as the solution set, the set of all solutions to the linear equation. And like I said, we're writing them out in what's referred to as parametric form. So parametric form means that we're going to say x sub 1, you go ahead and be s, x sub 2, you're t, and then x sub 3, we're just going to solve for x sub 3 by plugging in s for x sub 1 and t for x sub 2 and then just solving for x sub 3 all right and we have to state here that s and t are elements of the real number set so with that in mind if we start with this first one here we have x minus 3y equals 1 we're going to start by deciding which one of these variables x or y we're going to set as a parameter a specific letter so in this particular case, we start off by saying y equals t. Could we say x equals t or x equals s? 100% we could. But in this particular case, and as you'll see, saying that y equals t is going to make the problem just slightly easier. So if y equals t, 
then instead of x minus 3y equaling 1, I really have x minus 3t equals 1. And then I just solve for x by adding 3t over, so x equals 1 plus 3t. So therefore, I go to write my solution set. I say x equals 1 plus 3t, and y equals t, where t is a real number. Now, when I go from a to b, I notice that instead of just having two variables, I have three variables. What that implies is that I'm going to need to let two of those variables be parameters. And again, which ones I pick is kind of up to me, but there are some that are going to be better than others. In this particular situation, we decide to let x sub 1 equal s and x sub 3 equals t. And therefore, we're going to solve for x sub 2 in terms of s and t. And that's what you see from the second to the third step here. So we have 2s minus x sub 2 plus 4t equals 11. And then we solve for x sub 2 by adding it over and then subtracting the 11 over. So when we go to write our solution set, we say x sub 1 equals s, x sub 2 equals 2s plus 4t minus 11, what we solve for, and x sub 3 equals t. And again, s and t are real numbers. All right. Now, when we talk about a system of linear equations, okay, so not just one equation, but multiple equations, what we're going to do is we're going to have looking at them in their particular parametric forms as well. Notice this notation now here. This says a sub, it's not a sub 11, it's a sub 1, 1, which is read as row 1, column 1, x sub 1 plus a sub 1, 2, row 1, column 2, x sub 2, et cetera, all the way out. So this is just representing where we have multiple equations that are going to occur in the same system. And if we try to find the solution of them, basically what we're saying is that this is going to be the point of intersection that all equations are going to have. All right. So for example, if we have 2x sub 1 minus x sub 2 plus 4x sub 3 equals 11, and x sub 1 plus x sub 2 minus 3x sub 3 equals 2. Well, we could just check a couple of values. That's what we see here. We could check x1 equals 3, x2 equals negative 1, x3 equals 1. And while that does satisfy the first equation, meaning that the left side equals the right side, it does not satisfy the second equation. And since it doesn't satisfy both, that means it's not a solution to the system. Down here and looking at the second possible solution, we see in this example, x sub 1 equals 11 thirds, x sub 2 equals 13 thirds, x sub 3 equals 2. And that does satisfy both equations. Again, left side equals right side. Therefore, that is a solution to the system. Now, we want to classify the systems that we have here. And we classify them two ways. We classify them first, whether they're inconsistent or consistent. Inconsistent implies that there's no solution. Consistent implies that there's at least one solution. Maybe there's infinitely many, but we're saying it's, gotta, it's going to be having at least one solution. And then we're also going to classify them based on whether they're underspecified or overspecified. Underspecified means that we have more unknowns than equations. Now, what that implies is that we can't actually solve the system because we don't have enough information. But as you'll see, we can say certain things about them if we know the system is consistent. We'll get back to that in a little bit. And we say that the system is overspecified if there are more equations than unknowns. Now that we can solve. We can handle that, no problem, right? It's just we can't solve it if we have an underspecified situation. Our example here says x plus 2y equals 3, x plus 2y equals 4. So we see we have two variables two equations. That is not overspecified or underspecified. It is specified correctly. All right. But we can also look at whether it is consistent or inconsistent. And we say this would be an inconsistent system because if I were to try to solve this, notice the left sides are exactly the same. And the right side, the first one equals three, the second one equals four. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it's not going to work. If I were to try to graph those lines, those lines would be parallel to one another. All right. Uh, let's continue on. OK, so we can represent these, um, these linear systems in their equation form, or we can put them in what's referred to as an augmented matrix. 
Now, matrices are things that you've seen a little bit about, but we haven't worked too much with them, especially not in this course here. But basically, it's the same idea as just taking the system, getting rid of all of the variables, as long as everything's lined up, right? We have to make sure that all of the x1s are first, and then all the x2s are second, and then all the way out, and then the equal sign, and then we have our constants on the right side. As long as all the equations are in this format, then basically all we do is we switch to using our matrix notation, which looks like these big parentheses here. And then we just drop all the variables and just put in the coefficients. After we put the coefficients in on the left side, we use this vertical line. And then we put all of the constants on the right side. Now, don't get too worried about the fact that you have those dot, dot, dots in there. In this class, we're just looking at two by two and three by three systems. Therefore, two by three matrices and three by four matrices. I'm talking about adding in that extra column there to account for the fact that we have the constants on the other side of the equation. Now, very simple, just to take a look at an example here. If we have the system, as we see here, if we wanted to put it into an augmented matrix, well, it's already set up to be that because we see the X's are lined up, the Y's are lined up. Even though the second equation doesn't have a Y, we're just gonna put a zero there as a placeholder and the Z's are lined up and the constants are on the right side. So basically we're just going to drop the variables, use our matrix parentheses here, and again, vertical line separating the coefficients on the left side and the constants on the right side. That's it for this section here. Uh, hopefully you guys got a little bit of a better idea as to what parametric equations are um, and parametric solutions as well. And you get a little bit of an introduction to augmented matrices as well. Um, to practice this, I want you guys to try to work on page 257, numbers one through five. All right, have a good day. See you guys next time.